द कॉलर बाय जॉर्ज हर्बर्ट स्ट्रक्चर समरी एनालिसिस हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द डिस्कोर्स द कॉलर इज अ रिलीजियस पोअम बाय वेल्श पोअर्ट जॉर्ज हर्बर्ट विच वॉज पब्लिश इन सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड थर्टी थ्री इन हिज पोअटिक कलेक्शन द टेम्पल द पोअम डिपिक्स द इनर कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ऑफ अ रिलीजियस क्लर्जी मैन हु हैज डिवोटेड हिज लाइफ टू द वर्शिप ऑफ गॉड बट एक्सपीरियंसिस अ लॉस ऑफ फेथ एंड फीलिंग्स towards his commitments he then expresses his desire to break free of his religious restrictions and social expectations only to return back to the path of god in the end the caller is herbert's one of the best poems structure of the caller the caller is a metaphysical poem and hence it follows the basic idea of the poem in its structure too just like the poet wants to break free of his religious regulations and social norms the poem doesn't follow any specified pattern of poetry there's no recurring rhyming scheme in the poem yet the last four lines offer the rhyme a b a b the title itself offers a strong conceit the caller suggests a dog caller or the caller of a slave the caller signifies submission and control On the other hand the collar also refers to the piece of clothing worn by a member of the clergy in addition the collar can also be related to its homonyms like the collar at the end of the poem god the collar calls the poet and the poet responds with complete submission the other homonym is collar or anger with which the complaint against god is being made The caller is a 36 lines long poem with a single stanza. It's a free verse poem that includes a dialogue between the poet's two inner voices, sometimes identified as the heart and the will. While the will rebels against God and the caller or yoke of religion, the heart wins the battle, overcoming the will. The lines are of irregular length. The poet uses metaphor, similes and conceit. The poet expresses harvest as the motive of the poem. The poet complains that he has had no harvest except for a thorn. He believes that after planting the seeds of religious devotion, he has not received the harvest he expected. When the speaker's second voice interjects, it reminds him that there is fruit. The harvest therefore can be seen as a metaphor for spiritual fruits or rewards that are reaped in heaven. The poet expresses his desires and worldly striving for pleasure and gains as his case as a symbol. God then frees him. Summary of the caller lines 1 to 9. I struck the board and cried no more I will abroad. What shall I ever sigh and pine? my lines and life are free free as the road loose as the wind as large as store shall i be still in suit have i no harvest but a thorn to let me blood and not restore what i have lost with cordial fruit the poet begins with a shocking cry without any provocation and says enough he will not tolerate any more He explains his situation as he had had enough and now he will revolt and run away abroad. He further explains his dilemma and asks if it is necessary for him to sigh and pine and continue to suffer the frustration. The poet believes that this is not his sole purpose to want and strive for something that he cannot have. The poet shows dissatisfaction with the current direction of his life and is willing to make a change. The poet believes that he can live his life and write his story in lines free free as the road. What he means is that he is willing to break all the patterns, restraints and norms that bind him and live a carefree life like a loose wind with an enormous unlimited world to cover. The poet then asks if he must remain still in suit though he can break free he is not convinced. He inquires if it is possible for him to change his life now or has he trapped himself so deep that he cannot escape the cage he created. He then compares his current life with a plant plan that offers no fruit except thorns. 
these thorns harm him alone and he bleeds the poet says that what he loses cannot be restored though he hopes to use it to reinvigorate himself perhaps he can benefit from his own present suffering lines 10 to 18 sure there was wine before my sighs did dry it there was corn before my tears did drown it is the year only lost to me have i no base to crown it no flowers no garlands gay all blasted all wasted not so my heart but there is fruit and thou hast hands in the next lines the poet remembers that he had a different life before in the past when he had wine it would have had to have been before this sighs and did dry the poet suggests that though he is suffering now it was not like this since always and he had better times when he had wine and corn these days would be before his tears did drown it he feels as if his own emotional state is making his already bad situation worse the poet then expresses that he is striving to save this year he asks if there is any way for him to crown or save this year he does not want it to be lost to him the poet is bleeding because of the thorns he has harvested but he is searching for the flowers and garland gaze to improve his current situation and better his future he asks if there is no hope or if he has lost everything then his heart answers that it is not so there is the fruit of his striving he is determined to take that fruit along with his happiness in his hands and though he has lost a lot of time that has been wasted he wants to make better use of his remaining time line 19 to 28 recover all thy sigh blown age on double pleasures leave thy cold dispute of what is fit and not forsake thy cage thy rope of sands which petty thoughts have made and made to thee good cable to enforce and draw and be thy law while thou didst think and wouldst not see away take heed i will abroad the poet plans for his remaining time and says that his primary concern is to recover the pleasures of his past that he could have but hadn't he is willing to leave behind all the cold disputes concerning what is right and what is wrong fit or not he has wasted a lot of time thinking about what is holy proper or good these things will no longer interest him it is his goal to leave behind his cage and rope of sand the poet says that these confinements that he has been trapped in were made by religion and he erected them around him confining himself they were made by petty thoughts and turned into good cable which was able to enforce and draw and turn into the law that he obeyed however now he is willing to revolt and to break away the poet again announces that he will depart or abroad lines 2936 call in thy death's head there tie up thy fears he that phobias to suit and serve his need deserves his load but as i raved and grew more fierce and wild at every word me thought i heard one calling child and i replied my lord as the poem reaches conclusion the argument of the poet becomes more fierce and then the poet offers a pleasing twist the poet suggests that he is no more worried about death and accepts his mortal being rather the poet suggests that now he is willing to tie the fact of death for his own advantage and purpose of gaining as much pleasure as he could like a child the poet is complaining and he continues to go fears angrier and wild his inner being hears a soft sound child it is god's calling and the poet immediately responds my lord like a child he was chastised and brought back into the glory of god the poet uses a lot of imagery in this poem one such is that of fruit and harvest the idea of fruitfulness is an obvious image of fulfillment in life but herbert combines this with images of freedom the similes of free as the road loose as the wind 
brings a sense of space as well as plenty waiting out there for him. The use of verbal echoes and assonance is strong. He have noted the long I vowel sounds. Abroad is another word that gets echoed around in assonances. Board, store, restore, law, draw and so on. Abroad particularly symbolizes freedom meaning anywhere I choose to go. So this is it for today. We will continue to discuss the history of English literature. Please stay connected with the discourse. Thanks and regards.